Welcome to part two. As they bombarded me with hate, insulting me, telling me I was better off dead, and at one point insulting my father who had been dead for so many years. And they had me, a young man, should be happy in his prime, should be pushing to become into sports, in tears, in a corner curled in a ball, screaming for someone to kill him. Screaming for someone to kill him. Saying he'd drink a whole bat of fat when he got home just to kill himself. And eventually they finally called his mother, which they legally were supposed to do right away. Legally you're not allowed to talk to a minor in any situation as a school employee until the parent is there or on the phone. She heard me in tears screaming and she said, let my son go. I left. I had had a, attained my learner's permit at a level where I could drive to and from school by myself. So I drove home. For three hours I was sitting there, a knife to my throat in front of my mother ready to go. Ready to just go. Three and a half hours. That's how long it took for my mother to talk me out of it. Now, around that time I get a phone call from Lakeview. They called with the most snottiest voice saying, Mr. and Mrs. LaFan, we gotta come legally to make sure he's okay. And they hung up on us. All they did was their legal obligation was to call, make sure I got home, and that was it. They didn't have to, they didn't care if I got home, okay? They wouldn't have cared if I died. I tried to go through my sophomore year at that school. I tried. But it got so bad, they were failing me. I was failing my class. I wasn't getting the grades I should have. And eventually, I got moved to where I am now. A small school, not too far from it. That's literally one hallway, no more than 300 students. And I love it. Yeah, I'm still not doing the best of grades, but the teachers are amazing. And the principal helped me see this. At Lakeview, my teachers want to turn a blind eye. At CCHS, one of the teachers took the time to talk to me teach me about my diabetes, and help me learn so I can better myself. I have lost two pounds this past week from this new dieting idea. Two pounds. Now, it isn't much. It really isn't. Well, that's something. That's where I come from. That's where I've been. For the past almost three years now, I've been away from that girl that gave me that power. That girl that made me who I am. Her name was Michelle. I'll give her first name out just say her name was Michelle. I want to know if she's watching us. I still love her. And if she'd take me back, that'd be amazing. Because that would just boost me even more to do this. But you know what? I'm not going to bear. 
I don't expect her. She's a fine thing. She can get whoever she wants. She can give a fuck less about me. The reason I'm doing this diet isn't because I want to be attractive to women. Because it's not because I want to be skinny. Because mind you, my goal isn't 180, 160 pounds. My goal is 250 to 280. And I'm happy. I'll be happy. Why? Because at that point, I'll be healthy. I'll survive. And I'll keep writing my book in my life. You can watch these speeches. <laughs> Better than mine. Helling professionals. But the th one thing they won't tell you is not to aim to be a person or be like a person. It's aim to be you. I could aim to be like Jason David Frank. And for those of you who don't know who Jason David Frank is, think Mighty Morph Power Rangers Green Ranger, White Ranger, Red Zeal Ranger, for a short time Red Turbo Ranger. Someone from my childhood who was amazing at what he did, declared at one point the most handsome man on earth. I don't want to be him. I aim to have a build similar to what's currently built. He's a bulkier guy nowadays. My aim is to have his build. Not to be him. I want to be there. To survive. To continue making these videos. To continue making an impact on someone's life out there. Even if I get one view on a video, that's one person who sat there and got to learn about me. And possibly learn a little something themselves. I want my videos to not just be entertainment. But then again, I don't want them to be nothing more than entertainment. I want to know that when I die, my life was on here. And I showed everyone that I'm not going to give up. I'm not going to let this kill me. I'm not going to let this hold me back. And to everyone out there, because there are people out there right now who tell me I'll never make it, that I'll die within the year. I'll die trying, but I can't lift 200 pounds. But I can't make it down the road. Let me tell you something. You're not me. You'll never be me. And it's because of that, I fight on. Because I know deep down inside, I can get myself to bench press 200. I can get myself to run down that road. I can do it, and I will do it. If not for my family, if not for my friends, if not for the people who support me, for myself. As a matter of fact, you should do it just for yourself. Because the moment you do it for someone else, it's a job. Think of your life as a career. Something you want to love and do every single day. Wake up knowing you're going to be happy doing what you do. That's the way that I look at my dreams. Do I have very conventional dreams? Of being a doctor, lawyer, stuff? No. To me, those are jobs. Things that I have to do every day. Things that I'm willing to be late to. That I'm willing to miss a day of. What I'm not willing to miss a day of. What I'm willing to fight for and put the effort into. Is my future. Getting my dream career going. That's what your aim should be. Not to get a job. Not to just support your family. Not just to support yourself. But to get yourself to where you're happy what you're doing. Making the money you need. If anything, look at it like this. You can have a really good paying job. Never get to see your family or any of it be used. Because of the fact you got to work non-stop to get it. And hate every last second of it. 
Or you could be someone who's sitting there, barely makes enough to get by, maybe has to be on food stamp programs, but loves every second of their career. And you know what? I'd rather be that person because I'd be happier and better off that way than I would rich and depressed. The moment you're unhappy, you have to grow up and learn to be happy. It's been a long time since I've been happy. It's been a long time since I've had this energy to do this. It's been a long time since I've done anything meaningful. I used to take acting classes and loved it. Used to be in choir. Used to be in performing arts. And I threw it all away because I ran from a bully. And I didn't stand my ground. I had to fall on my ass and learn the hard way. Let me tell you now, you stand your ground. Don't get violent, but don't let them push you around. If the principal won't help you, take it to the superintendent. Superintendent won't help you, take it to the police. Police won't help you, you take it to the government. And then if they don't want to help you, you wait for them to take a swing at you, you get a nice good mark on your face, clear mark, or someone videotaping it. And as soon as that hit comes through and you get back from staggering, you beat the ever-living fuck out of them. You either beat the fuck out of them with a hug and let them know you know their pain. Or you put them in their place because they're just some rich, spoiled brat. I've met both kind of bullies. I've been only in two fights in my life. First one, back when I used to live downtown. This kid sent some shit to me that just pushed me over that. You rich, white, prestigious prick. You come down my road in a limousine to attend a kid's party and you want to start talk shit about me? I charged his ass. It took a full grown man to hold me back. I was gonna kill that motherfucker. But I learned. Maybe that prick needed that beating. I'll never know. Never got my hand on him. Boy, did I want to. After that day, it was installed by my father that you never hitch. You never use these. Unless it's imminent. Last fight I was in. I'm in elementary. One of my only friends from elementary that kept with me was my bully. He came up to take a swing and I got lucky enough to dodge it and he had a blocker. As he's sitting there, oh, son of a gun, that hurt. Nailed him right in the stomach. And he staggered back and fell on his ass. Winded. I picked him up and hugged him. Everyone's looking at each other like, what the hell? And I'm just sitting there hugging this kid. The next day, he came to me and said, hey. I don't want to be over him anymore. Let's be friends. And from that day on, every day during free time, we played Legos. We had a good time. Why? Because he was the kind of bully that was looking for a friend. But you got to remember, there's those bullies, that rare bully that really needs their ass kicked before they learn who they really are. Remember to always use fighting as a last resort. This has been Airsoft Fatty. I want to thank my Airsoft Nation for watching. And I wish you the best of luck on your journey. Keep me updated on your stuff, I'll keep you updated. On the weight and everything. Keep it real. Never hit someone until it's last resort. And always hug those you had to hit. Because something drove them to do it. Have a good evening.